Okay. Hello, Minglawa. Hello, Minglawa. The Naru Dini, the Naru Di Dolan Yi, the Naru Webinar Bono, the Nabi CC and Nabi or the Naru Di Dolan Yi Kalama, the Naru Ato Jare, Ato Chalu Yare, Ato Jare, the Naru Sibinia Nepa Tepido, a good training period, the Naru Da Pinte, the Candibido, a season a training penida, Taso Yen, the Naru Liam Yapi Babi. Lady Miao Pibabi, Lady Miao Ma, Professor Barry Jonel Gani Pido, Jonarudini, a lecture beam of Pibare, that was Professor Jerome Sedicosia Nibido, into Lopi Valley. Jerome, please. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So let me introduce uh, Professor Pierre Journeau. He's a uh, uh, pediatric orthopedic surgeon, very famous in, in France and uh, 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 also in Europe and uh, in, the, in the world. He is a leader uh, of the school of uh, Nancy, who uh, he, uh, uh, knows uh, very well the elastic stable intramedullary nailing, which is a, um, uh, a good uh, uh, treatment for uh, bone fracture in, uh, in children. So uh, he, he can share uh, to, with us his uh, very big experience on that uh, technique. So. Pierre, thank you to participate to this, this lecture, and uh, you can you can uh, uh, talk now. Thank you very much, Pierre. Thank you, Jerome. Thank you, uh, Professor Zo, and uh, it's a very great pleasure to be here. And thank you for your invitation. So I share share my screen. Uh, just. Uh, Okay, do you see my okay. screen? Yes, yes, right? Yes, you can you can start. Okay, so the flexible intermediary nailing is born uh, in Nancy, and you can see the famous place of Stanislas place uh, in uh, in Nancy uh, during the night. And um, I would like to explain to you some uh, basic uh, principle uh, and the biomechanical principle of uh, flexible internal nailing. The main principle are like a boat uh, on the waves, because if you consider the bone, the muscles uh, push and pull the bone uh, between two different directions. And when you have the, uh, uh, yes. And when we push the nail into the bone, when you have a fracture, you can imagine the balance between one, then two nails. The main indication of flexible and traveling learning are principal uh, traumatology, but we can use the flexible nailing in other weakness uh, disease like uh, osteogenesis imperfecta or other fragile bone disease. The third indication is to use a flexible nailing in, uh, during bone lengthening because it's more stable after uh, device removal. Imagine that during the fracture, the nail are elastic and not rigid. And if you put only one nail, as you can see on this picture, you push the nail and the bone follow the direction of the nail in various or valgus deformity. But if you put the same nail in the other, in adverse direction, you create a stable uh, device, but not rigid. And the pathophysiology of the fracture of the children is very important to consider because you have a very uh, thick periosteum around the bone. And if you have uh, elastic and stable uh, frame, it's uh, a very good condition to, uh, to have a high speed of uh, bone healing. In this example of, like, um, of uh, fracture, the first nail creates a tension shear and compression shear. Uh, providing a valgus deformity. But in other adverse effects, you have 
back to equilibrium and compression shear and test and shear in various deformity. And you have at the head a balance between the both nails, but to have a very good balance between the both nails, you need to have a very precise position of the nails. And to summarize the biomechanical principle, it's very important to understand uh, five points. The first point is to have two nails exactly face to face. The second point is to have a, a very precise uh, diameter of the nail for each nail and the main, uh, the best nail, the best size is a 40% of the internal a canal for each nail. When you want to bend the nail, you need to bend the nail over 40 percent, uh, 40 degrees of, uh, of the nail. And the last point is to have six points of anchorage. The first point are of, on the entry point, then you have the maximum bending uh, at the level of the fracture, then the last anchorage point at the proximal part of the femur, and you need to impact the head of the nail into, in, in, the, in the bone. The other question uh, is uh, the, 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 the device, because you can use titanium or steel. Before 10 years old, there, Clinical and the outcome, clinical, uh, the clinical out outcome are equal. And you have the, the same rate of consolidation, you have the same duration of consolidation. But over uh, 50 kilograms in teenager, the steel is better because the steel is more rigid, less elastic, and sometimes cheaper than the titanium. For this reason, over 50 kilograms, we recommend to use uh, steel uh, flexible nailing instead uh, titanium uh, nails. So we I described uh, some uh, the main location of uh, fracture in uh, traumatology. Then we will uh, see the other indication is uh, in a few slides. Concerning the femoral midshaft fracture, uh, we recommend to put the child in the table traction uh, using, if possible, two fluoroscopy, AP view by this fluoroscope and lateral view uh, because it will be easier and uh, speeder to put the nail if you have two fluoroscopy. The, the incision is, uh, is important to consider the position of the nail because in this draw, you can see the entry point, sorry, you can see the entry point and the proximal part of the skin incision because when you push the nail, the nail will be against the skin. And if you put the entry point here, you have a skin damages during putting the nail. For this reason, we recommend to create the thing, the thing, the skin incision distally to, to the uh, to the entry point. Then you use a special device to create the hole. Then you put the nail exactly perpendicular to the hole and uh, by the reverse rotation you put the, you push the nail uh, gently by rotation until the uh, level of the fracture when you have the level of the fracture usually it's preferable to use a hammer to put the nail in the dist of the proximal part of the femur and another rotation to push the nail until the proximal part. The other option is to leave the nail 
at this point, then to push the other nail and to push the both nail uh, in valgus and various deformity to be sure that the correction will be perfect uh, using the small movement of rotation for the lateral and medial nails. At the end, you can adjust the position of the nail, including not absolutely a perfect position, because sometimes according to the level of the fracture, according to the uh, third fragment, you can uh, adjust the position of the nail to be have a perfect reduction in AP and lateral view. When you have a distal uh, fracture of the femur, you can use anterograde na uh, nailing using two holes just below the greater uh, trochanter. And the technique is the same. You push the first nail until the level of the fracture and you push just for one and two centimeters. Then you push the second nail until the level of the fracture and by small movements of rotation and using hammer, you can adjust the position just above the physis. The question sometimes is, the, is, could we push the nail through the physis? The answer is yes. You can push the nail through the physis in case of a very distal fracture, but you cannot to use rotation. You can use, you can push the nail through the physis without uh, rotation uh, to avoid any damages of the physis. But if you can, if you don't perform rotation, you cannot uh, create the physis uh, damages. To summarize the, the femoral shaft fracture, it's a very important to have a more or less good reduction using a, a traction table in AP and lateral view. And be aware that the rotation is very important to consider because the proximal part of uh, femoral shaft after the fracture is in, in lateral rotation due to the tension uh, by uh, psoas uh, muscles. And for that, it's a very important at the end to test and to check the rotation in lateral and medial and medially uh, to be sure and to compare the rotation of the both uh, femur. The nail size is uh, always four millimeters when you have 40 or 45 kilogram or over uh, 11 years old. The nail bending is uh, over 40 degrees, uh, always to be sure that you have a very, very stable uh, frame. Use uh, the hammer through, the, fact, through, through the, fact, the fracture. And at the end, you need to impact the nail through the cancellous bone. And sometimes if you can see on this X-ray, you can put the nail through the cortex to increase the stability, especially in the very uh, big uh, children. At the end, it's very important to cut very carefully the end, uh, the nail end, because you have the, some skin problem. And we recommend to not curve the nail uh, on the cortex because you have a uh, skin problem here. In my, uh, in my practice, I just bend the nail using elasticity, but I don't create a curve of the nail because if you just uh, uh, pull the nail before cutting, you use the elasticity and when you leave the nail, the, the nail will be just along the cortex after, after cutting. And the last point is to remove the nails before six months, because after six months, it's a very, very difficult to remove due to the very strong callus and strong cortex 
and uh, the risk is to create a new fracture if you remove the nail over uh, six or seven months. Concerning the post-operative cares, uh, usually the first day we leave the, the child on the bed using um, analgesic and leg elevation to avoid, uh, to avoid swelling. The day two, physiotherapy uh, for the knee extensions, no flexion because um, the flexion is uh, very painful due to the entry points and uh, uh, painful due to the conflict between the end nails and the skin and muscles. For this reason, the knee extension is more important than knee flexion. The walking uh, using crutches without weight bearing um, can start uh, at day two for uh, two, three, four, five days. And uh, the child will, uh, will leave the hospital at day two or three using uh, crutches during uh, uh, three, um, three weeks at least. According to the level of the fracture, you can start the weight bearing about uh, 50%. After three weeks, in case of a transverse fracture, in case of a proximal fracture or distal fracture, or in, the, in case of spiroid fracture, we recommend to uh, start the weight bearing in the um, five or six weeks uh, after fractures. The sport activity will, uh, will start at um, three or four months. And we will need leave the we will remove the nail before uh, six months. Usually we check the limb uh, discrepancy after one year because you can have a, a very mild overgrowth, especially in case of transverse fracture because you have a face-to-face -face fragment and you have a one or uh, two centimeter maximum of uh, overgrowth. In case of spiroid fracture, usually you have a, a very very mild shortening shortening of uh, one centimeters, and due to this shortening, you can avoid the limb discrepancy uh, due to uh, the overgrowth. We are moving to the leg fractures. And the main problem in the legs fractures in children is the intact fibula in more than 50%. For these reasons, the position of the nail uh, must to avoid virus uh, due to the intact fibula. If you have a fracture of the fibula, usually it's a very uh, unstable, but it will be easy uh, to avoid the virus because the, the nail, the, um, the position of the nail will be exactly uh, like the femoral shaft fracture. But if you have an intact fibula, we recommend to put the nail by uh, one way or the both way with two holes, but to put the hand uh, the hand nail against the, the, the various uh, deformity. And you can use the both hole in the same place, the same curvature, or to put the both entry points on the proximal part, but to put the nail just in the same position, avoiding the various deformity. The, tech, the surgical technique is a uh, the same, you create uh, one or two holes in the same part uh, of the face-to-face -face. and you push the nail uh, through the cancellous bone until to the canal, until the level of the fracture. You rotate the nail uh, using the T-handle to um, keep and to catch the uh, distal fragment, then you put the second nail and you push the boss nail until the distal part. And according to the position and of the fragment, according to the uh, 
intact fibula or not, you rotate the nail uh, until to have a perfect reduction, especially in case of an intact fibula, because the risk is a various deformity and progressive deformity after, after nailing. And uh, some drawing uh, to explain the correction of the various by rotation using two holes. And you have a, a large, it's a, for my, in my opinion, it's better to use uh, two holes because you have a, a large space just as the level of the uh, fracture, but the A nail will be rotated just against the various deformity to have a, a stable position. If you have a very, very severe various deformity, you can use this position, but uh, in this case, you haven't uh, a, a large space and probably this uh, position of the nail using only uh, one way, um, it's less uh, stable uh, than uh, this, uh, this uh, frame. Sometimes, especially the very big teenager, you can use the uh, nail through the fibula to increase the stability uh, if you have a, a fracture of the boss, uh, uh, boss legs, the boss bones of the, of the legs. But it's a very rare uh, situation. And uh, usually it's a very, uh, very rare. And we are using a, a nail for the fibula only in less than 10% of the leg fracture. The forearm fracture, uh, it's uh, probably is a, not the best indication, but it's a very good indication because if you consider the duration of the bone healing, the, 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 the bone, the forearms, uh, bones are very, very thin, very thin canal, very big cortex, and the duration of the bone healing is very, very long. If, if you uh, put a cast, usually you need to put a cast uh, over uh, three months to be sure uh, to, 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 be, to, to, to get a good bone healing. The forearm fracture, you consider two bones and you always use wine nail for each bones. Because if you have, even you have a, mm, undis, uh, undisplacement uh, of the ulna, for example, some surgeon said, so I use one nail for the displaced uh, bone, but I cannot to put another nail. It's not a good idea. And you need to have exactly the same biomechanical principle because imagine uh, for the forearm, it's a one bone forearm and you use the both nail face to face, providing elasticity and stable frame using the enterosus membrane and the bending and the face to face nail stretch the membrane and provide a very good stability by stretching uh, the muscle and membrane. For this reason, it's a mandatory to use one nail for each bone in case of, of, uh, of fracture. The tip of the nail will be face to face and, uh, or, and, the, and the rotation will be uh, face to face for the proximal part of the radius and distal part of ulna for keeping the bending of each nail. The position uh, of the entry point for the ulna will, uh, will be posterior lateral approach uh, to avoid the, the ulna crest because if you put the nail through the ulna crest, the risk is a, will be the skin problem just as the tip here. If you use a posterior lateral approach, you have a, a more thick soft tissue and you will, uh, you will uh, avoid the skin uh, problems. Always a hammer for putting the nail through the fracture because it's a very, very thin, especially for the radius. If you consider the, the internal di diameter is a very thin and the cortex is thick. 
and uh, the uh, position of the nail will be uh, keep the pronation and supination and you need to check at the end the pronation and supination. Sometimes when you test the pronation and supination, you hear um, meaning that the nail will be uh, in the exact position according to the uh, type uh, of, the, of the fracture. The last point is the removal of the nail because uh, according to the, the aspect of the bone in the forearm, very thick uh, cortex, uh, the duration of the bone in is very long, uh, more than uh, many, many months, more than uh, three or four months. And we recommend to remove the nail after six, um, and I prefer eight months to avoid the recurrent uh, fracture. The question is, do to consider cast mobilization? The answer is not, because if you put a cast, it means that your frame is not stable. And uh, usually, uh, I, I said I prefer to put a cast, but it's a, a joke, of course, but I prefer to put a cast after one month, because after one month, uh, uh, after the, the, the flexible nailing, we have a, a child without any pain, he can move, he can uh, check the pronation and supination, and he wants to return to sports after one month. And you need to be strict and to say no, because it's a, the, it's a like a internal cast. And if you put to protect the, the forearm, you don't need to put a cast during the one, the first month, but after a few weeks to avoid the, the, the return to sport activities. So of course it's a joke, but uh, consider that. So it's a short uh, video to describe the surgical techniques of the forearm fracture. After champ, surgical champ, you need uh, very few instruments, only t handle K-wire, Usually, usually for the forearm fracture, we prefer to use a carrier in steel because it's more stable, because you have only uh, one nail for each bone. You cut the hand to be smooth and you bend the tip uh, about uh, 20 or 30 degrees. Then you bend the nail just uh, according to the level of the fractures. And if you have a proximal part of the fracture, you need to bend the proximal part of the nail. And if you have the mid shaft, the maximum bending will be in the middle of the nail. You need to bend the nail exactly in the same curvature to be sure that you have a exactly face-to-face uh, -face bending in the each bone for the best stretching of the interosseous membrane. And the bending will be the same. And when the nail will be in the bone, you will have a very precise face-to-face uh, -face, uh, stable frame. After preparing the nails, you perform the skin incision on the lateral distal parts uh, of the radius. You can use or not uh, tunicates, it depends on the habits. Be aware that uh, the distal part of a very sensitive, very small sensitive nerve branch of the radius and you need to protect the sensitive nerve branch. Then to create a hole, a larging by small movement of rotation. And you check in the fluoroscopy the uh, position of the hole. Then you introduce the nail through the hole, perpendicular to the hole. Then you rotate the T-handle and you push the nail by small movements through the canal. 
you can start by reduce all the ulna. It depends on your habits. You can follow the progression of the nail using fluoroscopy to be sure that the position of the tip is exactly face to the uh, proximal fragment. It's a very important to push the nail using hammer because remember that the canal is very, very thin. And if you don't use hammer, you push the proximal fragment, but you cannot to push the nail through the canal of the proximal fragment. Then you can check the position for keeping the exact curvature of the nail for to restore the curvature of the radius. The proximal uh, approach of the ulna is uh, posterolateral. The, the crest is here, and the approach is uh, more lateral to avoid the skin problem after after the nail. Consider the impaction of the tips here to be sure that the stability will be perfect. To introduce the nail is exactly the same for the ulna and radius. You check under fluoroscopy, you rotate the tip to be sure that it will be easy to uh, put the nail through the fracture using hammer. And you feel when you push the nail through the canal. Then you need to check the position of the tip to be sure that the tip will be in, in, in lateral position with the precise impaction to be stable. You bend or not, it's your choice. For me, I don't bend. After, before cutting because the risk is a skin problem. I prefer to pull and use the elastic, uh, the elasticity of the, of the nail to avoid the skin problem. But it will be more difficult to remove. After that, you make a large dressing, you check the pronation and supination to be sure that are the, exactly the same. And a uh, small sling will be used for 10 days or two weeks uh, for avoid the swelling. The post operative care is more or less the same uh, like uh, other fracture, analgesic, sling to avoid swelling, uh, mobility of the forearm using a small movement of pronation and supination, and the sling will be removed. Uh, before three weeks uh, to restore the, the daily activities. Sport activities, not before four months because it's a very fragile uh, due to the, the long duration of the bone healing. And uh, remember that uh, don't remove the nail before uh, six months for avoiding the recurrent fracture. If you consider this X-ray, it's like uh, seven errors uh, games because the nail of the ulna is uh, through the olecranon. Don't remember, don't uh, don't forget that uh, you have a, a physis here, and if you put the nail through the olecranon, you have a risk of the physis injuries. The nail, have, of course, very very thin. And the question concerning the size of the nail is uh, uh, usually 80% of the canal. It's logical because when you perform flexible nailing for one bone, you use two nails and you use 40% for each nail. 40% uh, plus 40% equal 80% for one bone for the tibia and for the femur. But for the program, you have the both bone and you need to use 80% for each nail for each bone because you have only one nail for one bone. And in this case, it's like a, like a snake, not really a stable 
flexible nelly. The position is uh, not correct because it's not in, there haven't any impaction in this position. The tip is a lateral part. Usually the tip will be in the medially to be to be sure to keep the the, the, the curvature. And uh, you have the same problem for the Yulna, and uh, the result will be uh, non-union, of course, because it's not stable, uh, too thin, uh, very bad position of the nail. It is not a real flexible intervalary nailing. It's a just a two carrier through the fractures. Then we move to the epiphyseal fracture. We have two examples. The first one is a radial neck fracture. The second one will be the proximal part fracture of the humerus. For that, we have uh, some uh, tips and tricks. The first one is to use a sharp nails in case of epiphyseal fracture. Why? Because the cancellous bone is very, very strong. And if you uh, use a smooth end nail, you cannot to put the nail through the considerous bone. You will push the, 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 the bone, but you cannot to push the nail into the epiphyseal parts. And uh, in case of uh, radial neck fracture and also proximal uh, humerus fracture, in case of epiphyseal fracture, you need to use always a sharp nail. So the technique is uh, uh, mandatory to respect the same entry point of the distal radius um, with the protection of the sensitive nerve branch. You put the nail until the uh, proximal part. You push with the a hammer, sometimes you can put your thumbs in the radial head to avoid the over displacement and to help uh, the, the pushing the nail. After pushing the nail into the radial head to rotate the nail by its handle uh, using uh, uh, 180 degrees of rotation, helping by a mild movement of pronation to reduce progressively the radial head. Some example in the fluoroscopy. And in this example, you can observe a progressive reduction only by rotation of the proximal part of the nail. And sometimes, sorry, if you are not satisfied of the reduction, is if the reduction is not absolutely anatom anatomical, you can one more again remove the nail from one or two centimeters, rotate in the lateral part, push one more again the proximal part of the nail into the head, and rotate one more again your nails. If you want to use uh, another carrier to help the, the reduction, before, don't forget that here you have the periosteum and the vessels. And if you want to use another carrier to push, you need to push the radial head just on the head, not like a Kapanji method, because if you put the carrier here, the risk is a vessel damages and the head necrosis. And for this reason, you can help your reduction using only uh, thumbs, by thumbs, by your, near your fingers, or carrier, but only on the radial head. This uh, frame is not absolutely stable, and uh, we recommend to use. Uh, a long, uh, long cast um, above the elbow uh, in a mild pronation position for three weeks to avoid displacement because you have only a few millimeters in the radial head. And if you don't use a cast, the risk uh, is to observe a secondary uh, 
uh, displacements. Concerning the, sorry, concerning the supracondylar fracture, in Nancy, we use uh, this uh, very typical uh, flexible nailing by uh, anti-grade nailing. The advantages is uh, very stable because you use a big uh, K wire, sharp K wire through the um, distal part of the of the humerus. But uh, it's not very easy um, because uh, you need to have a perfect anatomical reduction using, if possible, two fluoroscopy in the AP lateral view. And uh, all the advantages is to avoid K wire uh, through the physis of the uh, lateral condyle or the trochlear. And um, you avoid the skin problem, you avoid the cast because it's a very stable due to the size of the nail. But honestly, it's not really, not really easy to perform this kind of flexible nailing. But if you have a, the, some habits to use it, it's, uh, you can avoid a, a cast. You can uh, put only sling for three weeks and you haven't any physis damages. So, I can. I prefer to to to, to show this uh, this technique because uh, you can uh, uh, keep in mind that we can use uh, flexible nailing for all kind of uh, fracture in children. And uh, last point is a proximal uh, humerus. If you want to perform a flexible nailing, you respect exactly the same bi biomechanical principle using t um, steel K wire because the humerus is a very, very large canal and you need to push a big nails, sharp nail because the epiphyseal part is a very strong. And uh, for the reduction, it's a very easy to reduce in very high, uh, abduction of the shoulders uh, to be sure that the reduction will be uh, correct. You need to check uh, in AP view and lateral view. And uh, after putting the nails, you need to use a sling for uh, three weeks uh, only. Now, I uh, just uh, some slide, uh, and we will uh, have probably some questions for the concerning traumatology. But I would like to show some other indication of the flexible nailing because, all, of course, uh, the main indication of uh, flexible nailing is traumatology. But you can use the flexible nailing for other indication. In case of very very uh, young. Uh, children uh, with a osteogenesis imperfecta or fibrodysplasia or other weakness bone disease, you can use it. Some example for the uh, osteogenesis imperfecta, it's uh, uh, very simple to put two K wire, in this case, through the physis without rotation to avoid any damages for following the growth. And if you push crossing, uh, crossing wire, uh, you can have a, a both nail just on the level of the fracture. And during the growth, the, this part is growing, this part is growing, and progressively, the um, nails are slipping face to face and protect the bone during the growth. Um, it's the same problem for the simple uh, simple cyst after biopsy, of course, because you can be sure that it's a banging tumor with a fluid You're using puction or using uh, MRI to be sure that it's not a osteosarcoma or erring sarcoma. You cannot to imagine to put the nail through uh, the bone in case of uh, lytic uh, lesion without biopsy. but. When you be sure that it's a, a simple bone cyst, you can put the nail with uh, two advantages. You protect the bone and the fluid 
um, go, goes down through the, through the canal and through the hole here. Um, and you can observe a bone healing um, by, the, by the reduction of the, of the cavity. And uh, in case of osteogenesis imperfect in the forearms, you can put the nail through the physis with a very large bending by suture to avoid the uh, mobilization of the, of the nail. And the last indication is a bone lengthening. You can say why? Uh, because you know, of course, the bone lengthening using external fixator. But the question after removal of external fixator is, uh, the question is, it's enough or not? The consolidation is enough or not? And if you put the nails uh, in the same times with the uh, external fixator, you increase the stability of the regenerate uh, parts and you allow, allowing the uh, earlier uh, removal of the external fixator. We perform uh, some uh, experimental study in ducks, and uh, this part is a regenerate bone after bone lengthening, and this part is the, uh, another cortex through the nails after a bone lengthening, and you can see a, a, a mild cortex increasing the bone stability. And if you have a cortex of the regenerate bone, you can imagine for other cortex along the nails. And for that, uh, we use a special size of the nail, a very thin uh, nail, not over 20% uh, of the internal diameter, uh, allowing a good uh, regenerate bone and increasing the stability. Um, just a short uh, uh, comment about our series without and with a flexible nailing. And you can see the duration of external fixator, 180 days without flexible nailing against uh, just uh, 108 days with uh, flexible nailing. Some example of, uh, concerning the bone lengthening, associated with the correction of uh, deformity. If you want to correct various or valgus deformity, uh, it's possible even if you use a flexible denning. Just one comment, uh, consider the maximum bending just above the, in this case, I'm sorry, in this, uh, in this example, you have the maximum bending above the level of osteotomy, uh, meaning uh, that during lengthening, this part goes down and you will have the maximum bending at the level of osteotomy after lengthening, increasing the stability when, when you will remove the external fixator. And the advantage is a less septic complication because you have a, a short, uh, short duration of external fixator to increase the stability, you decrease the risk of a recurrent fracture, and you decrease the risk of a progressive deformity after uh, external fixator removal. So to summarize the, this lecture, and uh, of course I will uh, I remain available for any questions, the flexible nailing is the best indication for children's methodology because it's a, not really easy, but it's a mandatory to respect the biomechanical principle. And even you haven't fluoroscopy, you can use flexible uh, nailing by open approach and you will see the canna, you will see the tip of the uh, of the nails and you can perform flexible nailing by open approach it is not mandatory to use fluoroscopy if you haven't fluoroscopy of course it's a uh, better without open approach but these techniques can be used with or without uh, 
laparoscopy in, uh, in scrobatology. Don't forget that you can use also the flexible netting for other indications like fragile bone disease or uh, bone lengthening. The, we have uh, two books in French and the English, and uh, I remain available for any question. Thank you for your attention. Just thank, uh, thank you, Pierre. Uh, yes, uh, you, you yes. can see the, my screen or not? Is it no, sure? oh, yes, okay, you okay, can okay, remove okay. it. Thank yes, you. right. Okay. Thank you. Just so, one hour.